But now let's go ahead and move on to the next topic as well. And this is from Collider 2. And I love this, guys. I think this is a great idea because I don't think anybody should be lied to by these big studios. But have you ever seen a movie or excuse me, been at home and you've seen a trailer for a movie? And you're like, man, that looks good. I want to see that. It piques my interest. It piques my interest. They're going to have this actor, this actress, yada, yada, yada. I love them. Hey, let's go see the movie or let's rent it. Now, how would you feel if, you know, who, who is your favorite actor out there right now? Let's just say, I don't know, Kathy Bates, random. And she's in the trailer, but she's not in the movie. Well, that's exactly what happened with a movie that came out a few years ago called Yesterday. I saw the movie. I thought it was good. But according to this report from Collider for topic number two, you can now sue movie studios for false advertising with deceptive trailers. Wow. The ruling comes after two End of the Armist fans successfully sued Universal over the actress's appearance in Yesterday or Lack the Rug. I think this is great, guys. And again, if you're watching this via live on the replay, there's a link down to this in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure. The case in question revolved around the underrated 2019 Danny Boyle film yesterday. This musical adventure had the interesting premise of his main character, played by Himesh Patel, profiting off of a world that forgot about the classic band, The Beatles. The trailers before film release showed that Anna the Armist would be playing a role in the film. However, if you were a fan of the now famous actress, you would have been disappointed by complete lack of her in yesterday. This caused two fans of the actress to file a lawsuit in January, claiming they rented the film after seeing the trailer for yesterday and making the discovery that she was cut from the final product. Now, Universal wanted the lawsuit thrown out as they would go on to argue that the trailers were protected under the First Amendment. They further claimed the trailers were artistic, expressive work that should be considered a three-minute story rather than an outright commercial. However, Judge Wilson, and shout out to him, rejected that and considered movie trailers commercial speech subject to California's false advertising and unfair competition laws. Wilson specifically wrote, Universal is correct that trailers involve some creative, some creativity and editorial discretion, but the creativity does not outweigh the commercial nature of the trailer. At its core, a trailer is an advertisement designed to sell a movie by providing consumers with a preview of the movie. Y'all, I agree with this 1000%, big time. Because I, myself, get pissed off when I get excited for a Marvel movie or a DC movie or any movie for that matter. And they have certain shots in the trailer that are not in the movie. Avengers Endgame, or excuse me, Infinity War, showing all the Avengers with the Incredible Hulk running towards the screen in Wakanda. That shot wasn't in the movie. Now... If you go on and read further in this article, it does get a bit more detail about all the ends and outs and the nitty gritty. And I'm going to read a little bit more. But one can say, well, at least those characters were in the movie still, Brandon. That's not even that case here. They had an actress in the in the trailer that was not in the movie. So that just takes it even further. And that makes perfect sense to me. If I if I like somebody, you know, like I was just talking about Michael J. White. I pretty much would see any movie that he puts out. I like martial arts. So I'm like, oh, a new martial arts movie is coming out with Michael J. White. And then he's in the trailer, but not in the movie. I'm like, wait a minute. 95% of the reason why I bought this thing is because he, I thought he was in it. So I agree with this wholeheartedly. Big time. I'm on board. You know, so. So they won the lawsuit. Yes, they did. Or let me, let, actually, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see here. Uh, Universal tried to fight back on that using clips from other past trailers from their library didn't make the cut. The biggest example was Jurassic Park, but it didn't make the, uh, the needle move in their favor. The studio also noted that commercial speech 
would be a slippery slope for other dissatisfied moviegoers who could just say because they didn't like the film based on the expectations of Simon Mr. Run of the trailer Universal Lawyer specifically said. Okay, so let me see here. Pretty, that's pretty much it. Under plaintiff's reasoning, a trailer would be stripped of full amendment protection and subject to burdensome litigation in time of your claim to be disappointed with whether and how much of any person or scene they saw in the trailer was in the final film, which whether the movie fit into the kind of genre they claim to expect or any unlimited number of disappointment viewer could claim. That's crap. Because, you know, I, I see what you're saying. Like, oh, you in the trailer, you made it seem like this person was in the movie a lot, but they was only in it for 15 seconds. This person was not in the movie at all. So, however, Wilson tackled that concern saying false advertising would only apply when significant portions of a trailer don't make it into the film. So things like the final shot of the Avengers Infinity War, or like I just said, being cut from that film wouldn't count. Wilson also said, they would only be listening to reasonable consumers writing. The court's holding is limited to representation as to whether an actress or scene is in the movie and nothing else. Again, they almost was completely cut from yesterday before she would explode onto the scene as a major star. She was going to be the secondary love interest for Patel's character, but screenwriter Richard Curtis said the actress was cut because audience didn't like the idea of taking away focus from the primary love interest. Uh, the 2D Armor fans paid $3.99 to rent the film and are now seeking $5 million? Oh my gosh. As representatives of a class movie customers. Wait a minute. The 2D Armor fans paid $3.99 to rent the film and are now seeking $5 million <laughs> as representatives of a class of movie customers. Because of the ruling the case will now proceed to discovery and a motion for class certification. Wow. You know what would be funny is if they did win and they won the 399 back. <laughs> they just got a refund. That would be funny. I mean, that that would be funny to me. Um, I, wow, five million. They they're asking for a man. As of now, you can sue studios for false advertising if you have a legitimate argument. It's going to be interesting to see how this case proceeds given this development. On top of that, this ruling may change the way movie studios handle their marketing and trailers in the future. Rightfully so, though. Uh, most may, I mean, because it's biased. They're, you know, they can trick you into making you, you know, think something is this and it's not. Most movie studios don't do their trailers in-house. The companies that do do cut together these trailers usually never know what's going to be on the cutting room floor. The yesterday situation in particular is an interesting case because the film came out before the Armors became a big star. The only major film she did before yesterday was Blade Runner 2049. Now because of Blonde, Deepwater, Knobs Out, and The Gray Man, she's arguably one of Hollywood's hottest movie stars. We're sure to get more developments on this case soon, but until then, you can watch yesterday's trailer that out. So, um, well, it's, it's a legal suit, and we don't know yet. But yeah, greedy and money talks. This is funny, y'all. This is funny. Uh, let's see here. What are y'all saying? False ads and trailers happen all the time. Coughs in game. Yeah, but is it right to um, you know, have somebody in the trailer that's not in the movie at all? And it's interesting. Definitely not seeing it. Let's see here. We should all sue Marvel. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Trailers are meant to engage the audience, not tell the whole story. Right on. Exact refund. That would be hilarious. I'm on the studio side now. Okay. I ain't mad at you. So, yeah, y'all, you can sue the studios now for false advertisement. If you have a good argument, you know, so that's quite interesting right there. Y'all let me know what you think of this. But again, if you're watching this via live on the replay, uh, there's a link down to this in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure.